Hey guys, coming at you with another video today on this Sunday morning. We're out on our walk for the day. It's a nice little Sunday. The neighborhood I moved into is incredibly quiet. Like it is stupidly quiet. <laughs> and there's houses all along each other. I know it's only eight o'clock and it's like 40 degrees out here, but still just blows my mind how quiet it is anyways. Today, I wanted to talk about sleep because it's one of my main things that I've kind of struggled with lately. I've been waking up quite a bit at like 2 or 4 a.m. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've really pinned it down to, obviously, is stress. <laughs> High amounts of stress can really go hand in hand with waking up in the middle of the day. And it's like on cue at like 2 o'clock. It's honestly pretty fascinating that my body will wake up at that time. So here's some of the things that I've done to make me feel and get up and get into a rhythm. So, you know, obviously the big thing is creating a bedtime routine, going to bed at the same time. Your brain obviously can function, but also runs on the fact that it knows to a certain extent when bedtime is. When it starts getting dark, we start producing melatonin. The more we produce, the later on it gets on at night. How we unfortunately deter this is when we watch screens, the blue light interferes with that. In addition to if we're eating before going to bed, we are interrupting our rhythm because our digestive tract is gone, which does not help with going to sleep whatsoever, unless you just smack a bunch of carbs, I guess. So no bueno on that. Now, I try to go to bed anywhere from 10 to 10.30. 10 to 10.30 is actually like the perfect time based off of, this is more astronomy stuff, but the pinnacle time to go to bed, I typically will wake up at 6.30. How many hours does that give us? Eight. Eight on the dot. Eight hours of sleep. I'm just seven to nine is what you at least need. And sometimes I've thought about maybe extending that out to nine because it's so imperative. You get a good amount of sleep every day. And it's not like, the problem is like, if you get four hours of sleep and then 13, It'll fix it? No, it won't because you're supposed to be getting a decent amount of sleep every day. Your body doesn't work like that. So first thing I know when people are struggling, they're in a slump, you get tired and stuff, you get adrenal fatigue. First step is to get that sleep, you know, get that sleep as much as you can across through the street. Um and prioritize it, make a bedtime routine. Like I, at the end of the night, will wind down by doing some yoga, I'll do some stretching. Um, I'll really focus on not eating, not using my electronics. Um, I will meditate, especially during the weekday, because we have kind of like, I have obviously a much easier time getting to bed on the weekends. Mainly for me, it's because I, you know, I'm going to work. So there's a little more stress involved. Weekends, easy for me. But those, honestly, was where you capture the sleep and stay in the rhythm. I know people like to go out, and I'm not saying don't go out, don't have fun. But as far as getting into a rhythm, I'm really still trying to wake up around the same time each day. Regardless if it's on the weekend. So, um, and then... As far as waking up, you try to wake up and, you know, don't snooze. I know it's so trouble not to, but snoozing can trick your body into thinking that it's, it's going back to sleep. And this creates a lot of grogginess and stuff like that. So if you're setting your alarm, that's the time you're waking up. That's the time you're getting up out of bed. And I promise you, over time, these you could reset your circadian rhythm in five days. 
Your body's incredible like that, but you have to be disciplined with it. And if you have trouble getting to sleep, so I don't have necessarily trouble getting to sleep. I have trouble getting up. And you can take, I don't, I'm not going to recommend a sleep aid, but I'm taking a vitamin B complex just to amp up some of my B vitamins to help with um, going to sleep and relaxation, especially B1. Um, so that's one recommendation. Um, also, you need to be in a good setting to sleep. You need to have a good temperature. Um, you need to have, you know, everything set up perfectly so you can get to sleep easily. It's not one of those things where you can just, you know, tread lightly if you're not going to sleep. You need to make sure your main, I like to go to sleep around 65 degrees. Um, I like to have only a certain type of covers. You know, there are certain things and I like to have the right kind of pillow. That's huge too. So making sure that you have the right kind of sleep environment is big as well. And if you can't fall asleep, or sorry, if you keep waking up from sleep, um, you know, not eating before bed is huge. That's one of the main things. Um, not, <laughs> I'm not drinking stuff beforehand because I'll wake up and I need to go pee. And so I really am cutting down on my smoothies at night because I'm drinking so much at night, like three hours before I go to bed. And it's just like, or two or one, it's just like, oh, of course I'm going to wake up and have to go pee. I don't blame my, that's not a small bladder. That's just the fact that I'm drinking too much. So I'm trying to cut down a little bit as far as smoothies and, and water and stuff like that even beforehand. So I am hope that got, this helps. Sleep is very, very important. You need to prioritize it. And it's a step towards recovery because if you can, if you can wake up feeling good, man, you're already, you're already there. So hope you guys enjoy. Peace.